good weekend last weekend there at the Twilight, um, as we, we've talked at, at nauseum or maybe multiple times uh, about the purpose of, of that meet and solidifying our, our Pac-12 team, which we have uh, which we have done. Um, but there in the meet, um, good for our alumni to uh, come back. Uh, good for us to. Um, applaud and give them their flowers, our, our 13 seniors, and then of course all the extra stuff that went into the meet. The kids run, jump, and throw clinic is always a, a fun time. We had 150 uh, kids there, I'm sure, for that. Then we have the um, high school mile, which we had uh, kids there from the state of Oregon and Washington rep representing uh, there as well. And then the uh, master's uh, mile. Uh, from 44 to 90, I think it was, that they quoted there. So um, the guy running the quarter there was definitely uh, something that is in awe-inspiring. Um, so lots of good stuff there out of the, the Twilight meet. And then um, went to uh, Palo Alto for the uh, Pac-12 Multis, where we got some points on the board with uh, Austin and uh, Kylie. So uh, good points there and good step in the right direction for us um, heading into this weekend. That kids clinic looked like maybe your most fun part of the whole thing. <laughs> yeah, you know, I was laughing with the kids there that were helping there. The uh, ducks, ducks love the kids, and uh, to see them give back and see them laughing and getting into it was definitely an awesome way to start the meet. The coach looked like he was. In the <laughs> yeah, you know, the little kids there, they they see a maybe not an imposing figure, but someone as tall as myself, and their eyes just light up like golf balls, and they give them a high five and see them. Their reactions there was this definitely priceless. Oh, but you guys have had such tremendous success as a pack for the last 10, 12 years. Do expectations increase year by year as this as the streak grows? Uh, maybe the outside expectation. I think it's one of those things to where we expect to go there and compete well and put our best foot forward. And of course, as we always talk about here, uh, be Oregon. And part of being Oregon is going there and doing really well. Does the streak? matter to this group of kids or is it a different group of kids with their own goals and expectations? Yeah, I would say a little of both. Um, a little of both is they want to continue with those that um, came before them and then they also want to put their own stamp on things as well. So uh, depending on who you talk to, it matters more or less one way or another. How much strategy goes into this meet as far as who you take, what events you put them in? Uh, do you kind of have map it out on a board and uh, see where you can Best get points. Yeah, you know, they we have those those dope sheet type things there as well that comes in as far as being prepared and putting your, your best foot forward. Um, lots of lots of strategy goes into that. Um, whether we run one kid in this event or another kid in this event, how it turns and, and swings the meet around. Uh, a two point swing for us would be a, a two point loss for somebody else, and then you get a four point swing there. So little little mathematical equations like that that go into into um, our entries. Going into the twilight, you know, you said you wanted to solidify that 26, 27, 28 spots going into Pac-12s. How solidified do they feel going in this week? Uh, definitely very much so um, uh, solidified. It's just uh, over and done with. Uh, I think we're going to hit send on the uh, budding tomorrow at 10 o'clock, I think, in the entries, or is the deadline for the entries? Miles Webb was a kid at the twilight who hoped he ran his way onto that. Um, what, him or other, other bubble kids, uh, uh, did his dream come true? Yeah, Miles Webb is uh, going to be an entrance into the uh, the Pac-12 uh, championship. Um, and so he was definitely one of those 26, 27, 28 type guys. Your sprinters have always have done well recently there, and they also did well at Mount Sac a couple weeks ago. Are they in a position heading into this Pac-12 meet where you can see them repeating that, that success at the conference championship? Well, I don't necessarily have a, a crystal ball like that, but I think we're in a good place uh, physically and a, a good place uh, schematically as far as how we do our, our training. Um, I think the coaches are pretty dialed into what this meet entails and what it takes. And we'll go there and, and put our best foot forward, like I, like I said. Lauren Rain Williams, uh, from the outside, maybe looking in, she got a little bit of a slow start uh, in the winter. Uh, is she, did she in your eyes, and and how do you, do you see her at this point uh, heading into the Pac-12? Yeah, um, she's she's pretty much just like the the rest of our newcomers um, that are experienced in Division One track and field. Um, there's a learning curve that comes with freshmen as they come to college, and she's definitely transitioning along uh, uh, just like the others and 
you know, she was pretty hurled out of high school. You know, she ran some, some really fast times there and then some even faster windy times. And so for her to be able to get some PRs here, um, she's only going to continue to blossom. And, you know, for her to be able to get past uh, some of those injury type things uh, that she had uh, there in high school just shows that our support staff here and Coach Taylor is doing a great job in nurturing and bringing her along uh, the right way. Were some of those slow start, was that attributable, do you think, to the injury concerns? Maybe not that she was hurt, but just concern about her getting hurt again? Yeah, uh, they, we just basically had to start from ground, uh, ground one, uh, ground zero, and basically, for lack of a better word, rebuild her and make sure that she's a very powerful young lady, probably more so than her body is, um, was ready for at that point in time. So we had to match some of those things up with her techni technical uh, component and technical ability there for her to be more technically sound so she can use that, that power of her in the right uh, position. So um, that's the part that's been uh, a learning experience for her to be able to just do some things correctly technical wise. And last question about her, I'm sorry guys. Um, <laughs> Uh, how would you describe her personality? Mm, quiet but bubbly. Quiet but bubbly, fun-loving person. Um, pleasant to work with. Does uh, everything that we they ask. Um, good kid. It's around this time last year that Shaquin really started to break out. How much better is she this year than she was last year at this point? A little more technically sound. Um, a little more confident. Um, I, I think those, those are our key things. And, of course, you know, a, a year in our system, you always get bigger, faster, stronger. So um, those, those help it as well. And you got a chance to see that a little bit earlier uh, there at Mount Sight. She said that part of her increased confidence is the help that you gave her over the summer. She said that you kind of stuck around and, and helped her work out. Can you talk about that a little bit? What happened over the summer with her that yeah, you think um, had a breakout? She, she, we sat down, of course, it was with all of our kids in the end of the year meeting and just talked about some of her goals. And of course, uh, she has some very, very lofty goals of wanting to, to jump really far. And of course, all kids, everybody has goals. Even you guys have goals and aspirations and dreams. Um, but it's easy to have those, but do you understand what it entails to accomplish those? And so that's the hard part. And part of uh, those goals for her is doing some work there over the summer. And most of her, mostly it was just some stuff there in the weight room to be able to her to absorb uh, some of the pounding and be able to get out of some of the positions that she puts herself in. Um, and so that was probably the start of what you see uh, today. One of the uh, seniors that you guys honored was Brooke Feldmeyer, and she announced on social media her time here has come to an end. How hard was it just to, for her to be sidelined this season and just as a member of the team? Yeah, um, that was some leadership that we uh, kind of lost because she's one of the ones that had been in the fray and had been around for a, a while. Um, and of course, uh, Brooke and I sat down and talked and the plan there for a little bit was for her to come back and maybe redshirt this year and then come back and, and do a fifth year. But uh, she has goals and dreams and, and aspirations as well. So when we sat down and talked again, um, it was her aspirations to go ahead and, and graduate and move forward and uh, continue on uh, this post-collegiate uh, career that she wants to do. do you, uh, Katie Ringsberger, will she be part of the group of people you're taking down. Katie Ringsberg will compete at the Pac-12 meet. <laughs>